In this video, we're going to show you how quick and easy it is to install and commission the EtherHall multi-gigabit radio link operating at E-band, the 70 to 80 gigahertz band, scaling up from 1 to 10 gigabits per second. These are the tools you'll need for the installation. A digital voltmeter to align the radio. A 7 millimeter open end or hex socket wrench a 10 mm hex socket or equivalent open-end wrench for aligning, a 2 mm flathead screwdriver for the DC connection, a 13 mm or half-inch hex socket or equivalent open-end wrench, a medium-head Phillips screwdriver to ground the radio and tighten the external antenna, a 7 mm open-end or hex socket wrench, an 8 mm Allen key for the 2-foot antenna installation, and a 16 mm or 5 8 inch open end wrench for the 2 foot antenna installation. The mounting bracket is packed in a separate box and already assembled for use. The bracket is suitable for any pole size between 2 to 4 inches using the proper hex socket wrench to mount it. In order to allow the antenna to move freely during the alignment, Unlock both the azimuth and the elevation lock bolts using the correct hex socket tool. Make sure you unlock all the bolts. Install the mounting bracket to a fixed and stable reinforced steel mounting pole. Point the mounting bracket toward the remote site while verifying a clear line of sight. Note that the bracket, in its default installation position, supports elevations between minus 10 to plus 60 degrees, making it suitable for most installation scenarios where radios are installed at roughly the same height, with an angle of between plus to minus 10 degrees. Note that rotating the bracket upside down gains up to minus 60 degrees in elevation. Unpack the radio and its accessories. Each EtherHall model package contains a different number of all-weather shells and a different DC connector type. Carefully place the radio on a clean, unobstructed work surface and remove the plastic cap protecting the RF waveguide interface. Remove the antenna from its box. You'll notice a plastic cover protecting the antenna's radome. It is treated with a hydrophobic coating designed to repel rain. Leave this cover on for the time being in order to protect the radome during the assembly and installation. Remember to remove it just prior to aligning the antenna. Remove the plastic cap protecting the antenna waveguide or feeder and notice the guiding pin next to the feeder. Now place the antenna on top of the outdoor unit so that the guiding pin is aligned with the guiding hole on the outdoor unit. You will feel the antenna drop into place when the alignment is perfect. Turn the ring clockwise, securing the antenna to the radio and tighten by hand. Use any medium screwdriver to tighten the ring firmly as shown. To mount the radio using the AXMKSM1 foot, assemble the four hex bolts to the back of the radio. Mount the radio to the bracket and tighten the hex bolts using a 7mm flat open end wrench. Remove the protective cover from the radome. Align the radio by hand so it's pointing in the direction of the remote end. The plastic alignment tube may assist you with pointing at the remote site. Once done, tightly lock the back plate. The radio must be grounded using a copper cable of at least 16 gauge and in accordance with local electrical codes. It is recommended to use surge protectors on the Ethernet cables to protect from surges caused by lightning or power irregularities. Indoor protectors are available for purchase from CCLU. All cables connected to the radio should be shielded and terminated by metallic connectors. Cables should be outdoor graded with category 5E or above with UV protection. To be able to pass a 10 gigabit per second rate, CAT 6A or better is necessary. This is the front panel of the EtherHall 8010. 
a digital voltmeter probe interface to read the RSSI level during the radio link alignment. A utility push button. A short press will reboot the radio. Pressing it for 10 seconds will restore it to the factory default settings. A fiber 10 gig SFP plus port. An Ethernet 10 gig 8023BZ port. An Ethernet 1 gig port for data as well as PoE in for powering up the radio. A DC port in the 42 to 57 volt range. Front panels of other E-band EtherHall products look slightly different. A DC connector interface, a digital voltmeter probe interface, a utility push button, two or four 1 gig ports, two are Ethernet RJ45, the other two ports are fiber. Make sure to use two wire 14 to 18 gauge cable or PoE plus injector. Plug the Ethernet cable into the PoE port of a PoE injector. A number of protective all-weather shells are provided in each radio box. Each fits a different cable diameter ranging from 3.5 mm to 9 mm. Select a rubber gasket that best fits the diameter of the Ethernet cable. Note that the rubber gasket is spliced and can be assembled on the cables with connectors. Connect the power over Ethernet cable to the radio PoE in port. Secure the all-weather shell by hand only. Do not use a tool to lock it. You can now safely power up the radio. The radio power LED illuminates orange and then blinks green until the radio is fully booted, a process that takes about 90 seconds. When the radio is fully booted, the RF LED will be grayed off, indicating the radio link is down. Insert the digital voltmeter probes into the probe interface port of the radio. It will automatically switch the radio to alignment mode. The RF LED color indicator will turn orange, indicating the radio is in alignment mode. The radio will remain in alignment mode until the radio is rebooted, even if the voltmeter probes are removed. Read the received signal level, or RSSI, using the voltmeter. Set the digital voltmeter to measure DC voltage. The voltage reading will be between 0 and 1 volt, indicating the RSSI in dBm. The voltage reading is equivalent to the received signal level. For example, a reading of 0.35 volts is equivalent to an RSSI of minus 35 dBm. The objective of the antenna alignment is to achieve the expected received signal level, or RSSI. To do so, both the azimuth and the elevation should be scanned to verify that the antenna is on the main lobe. Perform fine azimuth and elevation alignment using the adjustment bolts, identifying the main lobe until the expected receive level is achieved, which should be within plus minus 4 dB. Sweep over both azimuth and elevation so that the antenna's main lobe is pointing at the remote radio with the strongest measured signal. Once the optimum position has been achieved, tighten and lock the azimuth adjustment lock bolts, and then tighten and lock the elevation adjustment lock bolts. Use the DVM to verify that the RSSI has not changed after locking all the bolts. Disconnect the voltmeter, Reboot the radio by power cycling the PoE injector or pressing the utility push button, a process that takes about 90 seconds. Reconnect the port cap. Now when both antennas are aligned and locked, verify that the RF LED on both radios illuminates green, indicating that the radio link is up. Any kind of layer 2 Ethernet data can now be transparently streamed over the radio link. Opening the two-foot antenna box, you'll find the following. A side strut for high wind load resistance. Note that this part is optional. A two-foot radio adapter plate to mount between the radio and the antenna back plate. A pre-assembled, ready-to-mount two-foot antenna with mounting kit. A detailed installation manual. The metal adapter plate must be attached to the radio. 
Remove it from the box and secure it to the radio using the supplied Phillips head screws. The three long screws go on the outer perimeter while the three short ones are optional and required for some ether hall models on the inner perimeter next to the antenna feeder. Remove the protective tape from the antenna feeder. Place the radio pointing up according to the required polarization on the antenna backplate. Use an 8mm Allen key to tighten the bolts in a crisscross pattern, first one and then the corresponding opposite one. Once all bolts are tight, the radio and antenna are ready to be mounted. Mount the antenna on any pole having a diameter between 2 and 4.5 and inches. After the radio is powered up, connect the voltmeter to the alignment socket on the radio. Confirm that the LEDs at both the local and remote ends are orange before beginning the alignment. Loosen the two adjustment nuts and the two corresponding bolts using a 16mm or 5 8 inch open wrench. Then make a rough azimuth alignment using a line of sight visual check with the remote end. When completed, lock back all bolts and nuts. To adjust elevation, loosen the elevation locking bolts so as to allow smooth movement. Rotate the elevation adjustment bolt, targeting the expected RSSI level. Once done, lock all elevation locking bolts. This process may require several iterations at both the local and remote ends until the expected RSSI reading is achieved. Disconnect the voltmeter and reboot the radio by power cycling the PoE injector or pressing the utility push button. Now reconnect the port cap. Now when both antennas are aligned and locked, verify that the RF LED on both radios illuminates green, indicating that the radio link is up. Any kind of Layer 2 Ethernet data can now be transparently streamed over the radio link. Thank you for your attention. For more information, please visit us at cclue.com.